The time has come, young Padawan. Your training is nearly complete, and you will soon walk the world as a true Hex Master. Throughout this series, I've been training you to work in Hex all by yourself, and I've been doing your training all alone. Well, except for my cat, but he doesn't really know much Python or SQL. He's more of a JavaScript guy. That's besides the point. That's all to say that today, our solo journey ends here. And today, we'll unlock the full, true potential power of Hex. Working on data projects with the rest of your team. What's up, guys? Gabe here, developer advocate with Hex, and welcome to our last and final episode from our course on Hex Foundations. Now, like Notion or Google Docs, you can actually work on Hex projects with other people. This is a little trick that we like to call collaboration. This also means that you can build out reports that you can share with the rest of your team or even some non-technical folks, like the boss of your boss's boss. Now, today, we're gonna be talking about how collaboration works in Hex, how to turn your logic into a Hex app, and then how to share that app with other people. And by the end of this, you'll know how to turn your analytical projects into beautiful, interactive apps that you can share with anyone, anyone in the world. So let's go ahead and get started. Whether you're working on a team project or having a coworker explain Python decorators, in today's modern world, collaboration plays a big part in how we work. Although the tools of the past, <coughs> Jupiter, <coughs> um, sorry, didn't make this very easy. Let's just consider the simple scenario of wanting some help and getting unstuck somewhere in your analysis. You might find yourself sending a Jupyter notebook file in an email along with an explanation of your work and where the issue is, which might kickstart a long, boring, and tiresome email thread for what should be a very straightforward task. And remember, this is just the simplest of scenarios. There might be ones that are even more complex and more annoying to deal with. I don't want that for me and I don't want that for you. All right, so let's take a look at how easy it is to address the simple solution in Hex. So here I am in my project and um, I've actually introduced some artificial error in the cell right here, which is basically just that when I'm showing the most popular menu item and how much revenue it brought in for that year, I'm getting the wrong value. I'm seeing 656 and I should be seeing this 909 right here. Let's just pretend for a second that I actually don't know what's going on here. So I might be sitting here in my project like, oh my gosh, what's going on with this? I've been working on this for the last hour and a half and I have no idea why I'm getting the wrong value here. But I think one of my teammates might be able to help me out with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag him in this project in a comment and see if he can help me out. I can actually just go ahead and leave a comment tagging them in my project. When they see the comment, it'll bring them right to the cell where I'm seeing this issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag my teammate, which is actually just myself. And I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna copy this in. I'm saying that, please, Gabe, I can't, I can't code. I'm in this issue. I'm supposed to see, I'm supposed to be seeing 909, but I'm seeing 656. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave this comment for Gabe. Here at the bottom, I see that I have two new unread notifications. So let's go ahead and click on this and see what they say. So it looks like 13 seconds ago, Gabe mentioned me in a comment saying that he needs help with something in his project. So let's go ahead and click on this and see what he needs. So I'm gonna click on this and look at this. It brings me right to the cell where the problem was happening, which is really helpful because now I don't actually have to look through, cause maybe there's multiple comments in this project. I don't wanna have to look through all of them to figure out where he needs help. I can just go ahead and click on that and be brought right there. Now, another thing that you guys might have noticed is that now we can see this little presence indicator showing me that I now have two people working in my project simultaneously. And the more and more people that you add to your project, the more and more, the more, and more of these presence icons you're going to be seeing. So if someone's stalking you while you're working on a project, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know. So looking at Gabe's project, it looks like he's having some issues right here in this cell where he is seeing, um, let's just actually read the comment real quick. He's seeing 909 or he's seeing 656, but he should be seeing 909. Now, I think I already know what the solution is. He is actually just indexing the wrong value right here. This should be zero, but he's indexing it as two. So I can go ahead and make that change right now like this. Oh, but it looks like it says I cannot edit and read only editor. So why, why can't I make any edits? I thought he just invited me to the project to make edits for him. So when two people are working in a project at the same time, this is called multiplayer. And when in multiplayer, we don't want more than one person editing the same thing at the same time because we don't want you stepping over each other's toes. You know, it could be really frustrating trying to make edits in one cell, but someone else is typing over you. Right now in this cell, Gabe isn't actively editing in here, but Hex thinks that he is. So I'm right now in this read-only mode. But what I can do is actually go ahead and take over the cell, kicking Gabe out, locking it on this side, and now I can make those changes. There's a few ways that I can go about this. 
Right now, Gabe has invited me, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, but Gabe has invited me to this project and he's given me can edit access. And what this means is that I basically have the same level of control when it comes to editing this project. So I can, for one, I can just go ahead in the cell and edit the cell so that now the issue is fixed and if I run the cell, we can see that the problem has been resolved. But let's say for example, I don't wanna actually change Gabe's work and I want him to figure out the solution by himself. So maybe instead of changing it all together, I'm just leaving him a comment telling him what the solution is. And the last thing I can go about it is like I said, since I have full control over editing this project, I could add a new cell, copy all this and put in the solution so that he can see the, the difference between his, uh, his solution and my solution. I think for this case, just typing in the answer is simple enough. So I'm gonna just do that, do it like that and delete this comment and rerun my cell. Cool, and this multiplayer feature is not limited to just two people. You could potentially have your entire workspace working in a project all at the same time. Although I don't think that would be very productive for anyone if you guys had, you know, say 50 people in your workspace. If you have 50 people working in a heist project, I would be going crazy. And it's also really convenient that I was able to get all the help that I needed in this project without ever leaving Hex at all. I didn't have to go to my email. I didn't have to go to GitHub. I didn't have to go to a, a file upload site. All I did was leave a comment for Gabe and he was able to come right into my project and see where my problem was. All right, cool. So that was a little simple overview of collaboration inside of Hex. And now that I've gotten help with my project, I actually think I'm pretty much done and I'm ready to share my analysis. Now, since the audience I'm going to be sharing my project with isn't super technical, I'm going to try to hide most of my code and just show them the most important and relevant parts in my app. In the app view, you can rearrange the cells in your app, hide the ones that aren't very relevant, and then organize your project into a nice story. Now, we call these apps rather than plain old dashboards or reports because they have a certain level of flexibility and interactivity that sets them apart from normal dashboards. And creating an app is the fastest and easiest way to create these dashboards, reports, or those handy dandy internal tools that we all know and love. All right, so if we go to the app side of things, you'll see that the cells that are in my logic view are actually even showing up here. So we have a few options for how we can start arranging the cells in this app view. The first thing is to actually use this auto generate button right here, which we'll actually be using in a little bit. But the other way is to actually, and if we go to the outline view, we have all of our cells right here. And we can click the button to add to app. Or if we want to, we can drag and drop just like that. Or if we go to the notebook view from the logic view, we can click on this add to app button and it will add a new cell to our app. But what I'm gonna do to make our lives easier is to actually just go ahead and click on this auto generate button, which is gonna do some fancy logic behind the scenes to choose the cells that it thinks are most relevant. So I think this is a pretty good starting point and it looks like it added almost all the cells that I wanted. And now we can go ahead and customize this a bit more. As much as I like this picture right here, I think it's just kind of obnoxious. Honestly, it's just taking up too much space. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now I am on the app side of things, but I still have the option to go ahead and edit my cells. So what I just did, I just double clicked on it so I'll preview it and to edit a cell I can double click on it just like this or in some cells like this SQL cell right here I can just go ahead and click on the cell and it'll bring up this editing tab right here on the side so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this image because I think like I said it's kind of obnoxious and I'm just gonna comment it out and then I'll go ahead back into preview mode and see look see that looks a little bit more clean and tidy the next thing I want to do is actually remove this Python cell right here but before I do something that I do want to show you guys that's really cool is on the app side of things we have a lot of different ways that we can present cells in the app view. So right now we're just seeing the output of this Python cell, but if we click on this display element options, we can actually choose to see the source only. So now we're only seeing the code that generates the cell, or I can choose both. And I can see the source and the output, and, it's just, and this isn't just for Python cells. You can do this with SQL cells such as this one right here. If I clicked on source only, we would only see the query. And if I clicked on source and output, we see both the query and the output. And so I was gonna remove this, and I'm gonna remove this from my app. All right, so I've removed all the cells that I want to remove. And the next thing I wanna do is just rearrange some of my cells. So there are different ways that you can move cells around in your project. So for example, all these cells right here are linked, and you can see that all these cells have this box around it, which means that I can move all three of these cells together like a group. But I don't really actually wanna move this whole thing. What I really wanna do is just move these cells to be in the same column. So what I'll do is I'll click on the cell, and then I'll move it right below it. 
Now, another thing that I want to do is actually, I don't really like how it's kind of just taking up only half the space right here. It's only taking up half the space. We have a whole other section that we can use. So one thing that I could do is maybe either drag this cell up here and I can show all these cells on the same line. But I don't really like how this looks, how I have this extra space at the bottom. So maybe I can do this, move this up or down, but I, I still don't really like how that looks. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm just going to move this back down here. And what I can do is I can hit this distribute and resize row elements equally. And now these cells take up the whole space. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing down here. So now we can see that we have a pivot table. We have the output of our filter cell. So I think this looks pretty good. And the last thing that I want to do is maybe add some app facing context so that the viewer of the app knows what each section of my app is actually saying. Because right now it's kind of just like a, I have a this, this setting the scene cell and I don't really have any other context in this project. Now, if I want to add a new cell, you would think, you would think that I would have to go back to the notebook view, but we don't. We actually have the cell toolbar here at the bottom and we can go ahead and drag cells into my project by hovering over the cell, clicking on it and dragging it where I want to go. Now I'm gonna actually do this off screen, but I just wanted to show you guys how you guys can add new cells to your project without having to go back to the logic view. All right, so I've gone ahead and like I said, I've added some extra context. I just added some short words about what each section is called, some visualization, some of the most popular menu items, and then this exploration section down here, we can use this filter cells to alter the output table and see the visual in a pivot cell. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is actually make this visual a little bit more interesting by turning this pivot cell into a heat map. Now, rather than going ahead and doing this in a Python cell or a chart cell, what I can actually do is just format this cell by clicking on format and I'll hit color scale. And now I'm just gonna change this to that, save it, and now we have a nice heat map like pivot table. All right, so I think this project is looking pretty good, and I think anyone looking at this will have an easy time following the flow and playing around with this project. Now, in order to let people see this app, I'm gonna need to share it and publish it. I can configure who can see this app and how much access they have by clicking on the share button right here. So this is what I was mentioning earlier when I was talking about collaboration. So at the top, we have a search bar where we can add users, which is just a single user into your workspace. We can add group, which is a group of users in your workspace or a collection, which is just a group of projects. Next to that, we have this drop down that allows us to control how much access whoever we invite to the project has. So app only means people can see your published app and they can't see any of your logic. So this might be useful for stakeholders that aren't super technical and you don't even want them to be curious about looking at your logic. You just want them to look at your app and only focus on that. Can view means people can see your published app and the logic, but they can't edit the logic or share it with others. Next up is can edit where they can see your published app, but they can also edit the app as well. And this is the level of access that I had when I was collaborating with myself earlier. Lastly is full access, which is the god tier of access where you have full permission to edit, share, rename, and even delete projects. So this is just as if you created the project yourself. All right, so now I don't really actually mind who sees this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just share it to the web. And so when I share it to the web, I can also choose the level of access anyone with the link has. And this can either be app only or can view. All right, so now that I know who I want to share my project with, I can go ahead and publish it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this publishing button right here next to the share button. And now we are looking at the publishing user interface. So from here, I can update my project status, I can add a category, I can change the permissions so if we can see this project, and I can update my description. All right, so data freshness just means what is going to happen when the user opens up the published app. So the first is show recent, show results from a published or scheduled run. And this basically just means, hey, I just upload a project. I want you to show that to the user when they come to this page. I also leave a link in the description uh, explaining what scheduled runs are. The next is rerun if the app is stale. This works in conjunction with this bottom parameter here, which is set to 60 minutes. And this is saying, hey, when I, I'm gonna publish this app right now, and within the next 60 minutes, if anyone interacts with my app, you don't actually need to rerun it from top to bottom. You can just go ahead and run from this current state. But after an hour, if someone comes to my project and does interact with it, I actually do want you to rerun from top to bottom. So that's what rerun uh, if app is stale means. And the last one is run out from scratch, which is the slowest option. And this basically just means that anyone who comes to your project will have to run the app in full each time the page is visited, which is typically much slower. All apps will run from top to bottom when somebody interacts with an input parameter. 
all this interaction section is saying is when somebody interacts with something, am I going to rerun all the cells automatically once they have interacted with it? Or on the second option, what's gonna happen is you will actually see a run button appear at the top of your project. And anytime somebody interacts with your project, it's gonna wait for them to actually hit this run button before any of the interactions are actually registered by Hex. All right, so now that I've configured everything, I can go ahead and publish my app version. And this app has already had a full rerun of my project and it looks pretty good to me. So I can go ahead and publish this brand new version, man. Let's go. This is our first ever published app. Man, congratulations. Feel free to give yourself a pat on the back. Now I can also hit this view publish app button, which now I can see the published app live. All right, man. And that wraps up our last and final episode from this course. I hope you guys have enjoyed it's all the time that we spend together. I feel like we have become Come. We've become one. Now, as always, something for you guys to keep in mind is that collaboration in the Hex is the easiest and most intuitive way to work on data projects with your whole team. Apps are a convenient way to convert your logic into an easy digestible app that you can share with anyone, anyone in the world. Like I said before, your mom, your boss, your cat, me, if you want to, I wanna see all the apps you guys make. And lastly, you have tons of ways to configure how your app gets published in order to optimize for speed and collaboration. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the course and in the spirit of today's episode or the last episode, leave a comment down below with your favorite episode from the entire course or any types of videos that you guys would like to see us make in the future. I will see you guys, well, not in the next one, but I'll see you guys in a new video, I guess. All right, peace.